look, it was very quick. Uh, I think it was a five, six day process. Um, as you know, I was sitting back home in Vancouver with, with the plans to just see how things would go in, in the off season and take some time to be with my family. Uh, and, um, and we, we received uh, the phone call with this opportunity uh, sometime last week. And you know what? It was one of those where there's 11 professional teams uh, in reality in Canada. And, you know, just being home, just being in the Canadian market uh, was something that for me, for my family felt well. I'm going to start by saying that it's a, it was a bittersweet uh, moment for me because I knew that it would come with uh, someone else uh, being in a situation that's more, more difficult and more complex. And, but at the same time, I realized at, uh, on that day that um, had it been me or, or someone else when an organization in, is set on making a, a change, um, you, you, you have to understand that it's part of, of, of the process and, and it's part of the game. And I tried to keep that to the side and, and think about what was best for, uh, for, for me professionally the club felt it was the best thing for them as well. Um, and, and, and everything happened really quick. I'm still in a process of trying to grasp things and uh, meeting with the staff, meeting with people, uh, getting a good feel about everything. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, it's one of those that in sports, they, they happen quick and you have to be ready to just embrace them and, and, and jump on, on these challenges. Thanks, Philip. I appreciate that. I'll let someone else go ahead. Thank you, Charlie. We'll go ahead with Adam Jenkins. Thank you very much, Philip. Uh, Félicitations. Bonjour. Uh, I just want to say it was a little bit unexpected for all of us, but it's always exciting to welcome someone else into the CPL family. My question for you, and I don't expect you to be able to fully speak for Wade in the decision from uh, up top, but I'm assuming that with you coming in mid-season as opposed to perhaps waiting for this change in the off-season, that the expectation still is for this club to get into the, the top four, make the playoffs, and, and be more competitive. So if you could just um, tell me if I'm right or wrong there and why you think that this side has it in them, injuries um, being considered to make that final push. Look, I, I, I think it's, uh, you're right when it comes to that. There's still a big belief that, uh, that uh, the playoff is, is something tangible. It's something that, that we want. Uh, it starts on Sunday. And, um, uh, and again, it's hard for me to judge what was before. I don't want to get into these things and these discussions. No, uh, those are things that you assess as you're here. And, and, uh, but the, the mandate is to, is to still get above that line. And then we know that once you're in a playoff uh, system and structure, it's game on when you, when you arrive to, um, to the playoff. Now, we know that we're in a good position um, I don't think that that was the question uh, because the team's in a, a position where, uh, in reality, they have a, a game in. We have a game in hand, and and we 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 play York this weekend. So it's it's a position where everything is on us to make it. Now I don't think it's fair for me to step in just seeing it. In a short term, I think that I need to look at the bigger picture. So it's going to be. It's going to be about how does the team progress? Uh, where's the next gear? Where can I bring something different that's going to trigger maybe certain behaviors that the team needs? So uh, I think it's all part of the assessment to be made. I've watched a lot of the game, especially after the talks, and uh, we will do the work with the staff. We'll, we're here to maximize the potential of the players, and, and I think that's our job as a coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Michael, you can go ahead. Hi there, Phil. Congratulations. Hey, Michael. Hey. We, we never got our coffee we we're going to have, but I'm sure I'll catch up with you soon. Um, th this is the obviously the first senior job where you've been the head coach. You're also taking on the GM role. How much did having that full authority play into you wanting to, to take this role on just now? 
it was clear in my head that I wanted the next move. I wanted to to have this opportunity. There were discussions with uh, with um, uh, clubs from other leagues that um, in the past that made me realize that maybe you know in the near future it was time for me to take that next step. It had nothing to do with the coach GM. No, I'm a coach. I like to coach. I understand the general manager. Uh, side of the job. I think a lot of times in in uh, leagues that operate with smaller structures, very often it's going to come, the head coaching job will come with the GM job. So I'm okay with that. It's familiar uh, ground for me uh, because I've been around that type of, those type of structures. Uh, but it was really getting to the next step. I think that, like I said, with Eight pro, te- uh, eight pro teams in the CPL and three in the MLS. It's a market where it, it, it's interesting, but it's very hard and competitive to get in. So I felt this was the time for me. And, um, and I, I believe that I'm, I'm a better person at 43 for this job, more prepared, uh, more experience. Um, I've seen more not only in the job, but also in my management of people and how to, 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 to go and get the maximum out of, of individuals. That's great. Thanks so much and good luck with everything. Thank you, Michael. Nice seeing you. Thank you, Michael. Christian Jack, you can go ahead. Hey, Phil, welcome to the Canadian Premier League. Uh, thanks for your time today. Um, I wanted to ask you, obviously, the, the team's getting healthier. It's a good time to take on the team. A lot of players back from injury. What is your kind of philosophy? What does a, a Phil De Santos team look like? And, and what excites you about this group of players? Now you've watched quite a few of them this week. I, I was talking to the staff, Christian, about that. And hi, by the way, I don't think we ever had the chance to to talk. Uh, we'll be doing a lots of it. It's a pleasure. Good. Um, look, I, I think that there's a utopia as a coach. You go, you go in with an idea of I want to be this exciting team that plays a football in the front foot as the ball. That for me is a cliche. Every team wants to do that. Every coach wants to have that. I think that the game has evolved in a way where you need to prepare your team to deal with the high moments and low moments of the game. So if you just step in and you prepare your team to be that front foot team and uh, high pressing team that that are active on the counter press, that has the ball, that's that's good. But there's moments in the game that you will be you will be lower. The opposition will have the edge on you. And now you need to know how to defend in that situation. You need to know how to exploit spaces in that situation. I want a team that understands the fluidity of the game, that, yes, wants to take the initiative of of the game, wants to be on the ball, uh, that wants to be aggressive on and off the ball. But uh, first and foremost, a team that's disciplined, that understands the moment they're in, uh, what to exploit, um, how to counter the opposition, a team that has energy. Uh, I, I remember talking to, to someone recently, and you guys, you guys are familiar with the Twilight Saga, no? Uh, when, they, when you look at, at someone and, and, and you see the vein, the vein pumping and uh, the, the energy of, of, of wanting something and, and, and really... Uh, feeling the person, and that's what I I want to see in the players playing with energy, with with those th- th- those type of of behaviors that are that are aggressive, that are um, hard to beat, to 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 play against. That uh, that every every day you uh, you know that if you play valor, you're up for a game for a fight, and that's what I want us to be about. Thank you. Uh, hi, Philip. It's Neil Davidson from the Canadian Press in Toronto. Congratulations on your new position. Thank you, Neil. As you mentioned, soccer is a business and coaches are often the ones that take the fall. You and your brother uh, exited Vancouver despite an undefeated streak in, in uh, league play. I'm just wondering, what has the time been like since then? Did you decompress with your family? Did the job search start immediately? What was that like? There, uh, yeah, I I tried to. There was no no job search per se. We were quiet, and there were a lot of 
of calls happening for bigger things, smaller things, things that were were to take later or not. Um, this was probably the craziest time um, since I've been in, in, in the pro game where I've been without a, a job. It just seemed like uh, there was a lot of, of action. Uh, so we were, we, were kind, we were trying to get some rest, but always thinking about, is it right to jump on something right away or should we wait? So uh, it, it's always hard for a family. It's hard for, for, for a coach when uh, you have to make these decisions, but this one just felt right. So we're excited about it as a family. And uh, yeah, we maybe took three days off, four days off. And then it was normal time with kids. I got to bring my son to school a few times and, Last night before flying here, I actually saw, I think, half an hour of his soccer practice, and it was the first time this year. So um, we did what we could, and uh, we're ready to go back at it. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Taylor Allen, you can go ahead. <clears throat> Thanks, Sam. Uh, Phil, very nice to meet you. Um, obviously, these past two and a half seasons have been pr- – Pretty tough for, for Valor not getting the results that they uh, had hoped for. Um, so, so why are you the right guy for the job? And, and what do you think needs to be done to be able to get this club um, to a point where they can compete with a Forge and a Calvary and a Pacific on a consistent basis? It, when you talk about the right guy on, on a job like that, you, you have to think about what the club wants and, and uh, what, what's the profile that they're looking looking at. I think that uh, what was asked from me was uh, to come into an environment and 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 try to make everyone around themselves better, and that's uh, that's what I, I'm I'm here to try and do. Um, it, it, I don't want to enter in, in comparing. I don't think it's it's the way to go about it. Uh, I think that I have uh, I have I'm driven. I'm passionate about what I do. I have a clear idea of how I want to go about things. And, and I think that you, you need to be firm on what you want to build here. And when this was presented to, to Wade, uh, I, I think that at, at the time, uh, the board members and, 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 and Wade uh, saw a fit um, and, and that's how I want to go about it. And that's, um, that's what I believe in. You never know who's the right guy until he gets on the job and he makes things happen. It's a very competitive league. There's teams that have been consistent. You're talking about uh, about Forge and Pacific. They're tough teams to play against. We understand that, but there's something they've had, and it's continuity. It's uh, finding rhythm. It's uh, being able to connect wins, and that's what we need to do over here. I think that I'm a methodic guy. I'm someone who understands the realities uh, of the sport. I I I know how to get the maximum out of individuals. I I believe in that, um, and I have to go with the confidence that that we're we're able to take the team to to a next level, and and we're able to go to that next level. Uh, one thing is me believing it. For me, that's one part of it. It's important that in the culture of this organization, players, staff, everyone in, involved also believes in it. Um, and we're in the business of dealing with people. And, and that's part of my job, making sure that we all embrace that and we, we try to get to the next gear. And I know you said it, uh, it felt right to take this job, but what, what about it exactly interests you? And, and do you have any ties to Winnipeg? Have you ever been here before? Never been here. Never been here. That's the crazy part of our job. Sometimes we just have to go by faith. It's a feeling. It's, uh, it's something that speaks to you. And you can't be afraid. We can't be afraid. And I've been around. I've moved around. Uh, I've been to places that everyone would say you're crazy to go there, and they were the most enjoyable ones. And I've been to places that people say it's it's amazing. You you need to go. And I got I got out of it saying I wouldn't go back. So uh, you never know. You have to go with faith. You have to go with confidence. You need to. When I I, I remember talking to people, and I said, look, it looks fast 
but there's something about me uh, inside me telling me go and go and grab the bull by the horns and that's what i want to do here thanks phil appreciate it thanks taylor thank you thank you taylor uh we'll move on to ed tate hey philip nice to meet you um i had have you had a chance to speak to the team yet i did i did today around 12 30 and what would your message be knowing that you you know you i know you're just getting your feet wet and getting to know the team but what is your message to them with the the playoffs on the line and and still some season left to play i spoke about the responsibility that we all have it's a uh, it's a tough day for everyone Ed. it's a uh, it's a day where emotionally it's been hard. The last three, four days have been difficult because there's a human side uh, uh, on, in everyone where you know it's going to be a day that you're supposed to enjoy, but it, it comes with, with the sad and the dark side of this sport where uh, someone is let go and it's been hard. Um, and, and so I didn't want to talk too much to the players. I want, I want to, to progressively feel every individual. Um, but the energy seemed there. The desire is there. And I think that they need to feel the responsibility uh, as, an, as, as part of this organization, um, that there's objectives that were set at the beginning of, of the season. We're still on track for those objectives. So, so we all have to embrace the responsibility that we have and try to get across that line and, and make it happen. And, um, and I feel that it's, it's when there's a situation like this, it's not only the coach, there's little things that we probably all have to work on. And I want players to also feel that responsibility. Um, if we haven't met uh, or checked all the boxes that led to to the club being where where they come to a decision like this. Uh, why did that happen, and where do we move, uh, or or what do we do going forward? And I, I want them to realize that there's part of responsibility in 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 them, uh, but also go with confidence that we're still in the run, and 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 we could still make it happen starting on Sunday. Right on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Adam, did you have a follow-up question? Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, just finally from me, Philip, I'm curious, you've seen the CPL on the opposite touchline. Now you're at the helm. Where do you see this league right now? And it's still in its infancy, but as we've seen, even last night, CPL teams going head to head with MLS sides and having competitive fixtures. And how much did becoming a part of this grassroots growing league entice you to want to be a part of it? Uh, I think it's uh, it's for sure a growing league. It was one of my questions when I was talking to um, to to Wade and talking to. I had the chance to talk to other people uh, linked with the league, and um, and I had the feeling of the growth and how how solid it's been and just just going through years that that were so complicated complicated and see seeing how they managed to to hang on and and keep pushing and and grow despite circumstances um it's it's a sign of growth no doubt um i've been two times on the field on the sideline against against cpl teams and i saw that uh, there's first-hand quality, uh, and and that's exciting. That's exciting. That's uh, I was I was talking to 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 colleagues of mine, and they asked me the questions about comparing a, a United Soccer League with 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 CPL, and without w- without doing comparing uh, directly like that. I I think that it's you know any given day. Um, you would be at the top. There are CPL teams that would be at, at the top of of of, uh, of a league like uh, like a USL, and um, and in a, any given day. And we're talking about budget differences that are so big that it would be unfair to compare with a, a, a major league. It would be almost uh, irrational. But in any given day, a CPL team could compete and 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 win. 
against uh, a major league team. And I've, I've experienced that. 